Welcome to PC Wits Kids Tech Talk. Today I wanted to talk about the new AMD Phenom 2 triple core, the 720 model. This one here is part of my performance gaming PC that I'm building. It's another PC that is going to be using the new AM3 CPUs. Now this one here, here's the model for your reference, is actually with a core that's not locked in at the default 2.8 gigahertz. So we're gonna overclock this one. Now the beauty about it is that it's only a max of 95 watts and it's compatible with my older motherboard, the 940 pin AM2 plus motherboard that I had for my previous Phenom. So I don't have to go out and get another motherboard. Now this one here has a whole bunch of new enhancements that I need to mention. First thing is that it accepts now DDR3. So just like the Intel Core i7, this one also takes DDR3. It's using the 45 nanometer architecture now, the die size. So it's gonna use less energy. And if you use the built-in AMD tools to keep it cool and quiet, you're really gonna notice the difference. Now this one also has six megs of level three cache as opposed to two, for example, in the previous Phenoms. Now let's take a look at my test system here. I've got some new parts in here to boost some performance. Like for example, an Diamond HD 4870X2, two gigs that I've overclocked. And I've got a different PSU that is 880 watts. I've got the Cooler Master V8 um, CPU cooler. I've got four um, gigs of the uh, Kingston HyperX 1066 megahertz. And I've also replaced the front fan on the case with a silver stone FM123 to keep that ambient maximum temperature that this can take down to a bare minimum. Now let's take a look at some benchmarks. If you look at the benchmarks here, the CPU-Z gives me the status right now. 17X is the multiplier to get the 3.4 gigahertz. At no load, I'm looking here about 24 degrees Celsius, which is super low, this is great. And when it's at full load, I'm looking at about 29 to 30 degrees Celsius, which is just incredible. It shows you that I could probably overclock this even more than 3.4 gigahertz easy, okay? But just for, for, for now, since I got it stable at 3.4, we're gonna stick at that. Now let's look at some 3D Mark and 3D Vantage results. All my tests are at 1280 times 1024, and I tried to have it always maxed out. Okay, so 17510, and we compare that on the uh, FutureMark website to a couple of other similar systems running the same video card and same amount of RAM operating system, and these are the results, okay, to give you a good idea on other Intel and Phenom processors, okay? So you can use that. Here's the 3D Vantage result, the P11880 and the CPU score. I got a very decent result. And again, you can compare that on the FutureMark website to three other similar systems. And here are the results, so you get an idea on what it is comparable to, okay? So you can use that again for your reference. Now let's take a look at the Sandra software here for some other benchmarks to support these results. And you can see here that when I ran the CPU uh, results here, like for example, the Winstone and some other um, tests, comparing to an Intel Core 2 Quad uh, Q6600 or some Intel Core Duos, the 8584 and 8300, uh, you can see that uh, this Phenom 2 triple core beats them all, okay? Now we're looking at comparable CPUs, okay? We're looking at what is fair when we compare, all right? We're not looking at, um, at something that wouldn't be fair to compare against a triple core necessarily. Now let's take a look at games, okay? When we play games, we want those frames per second. We want smooth and shiny graphics. So we're looking at the min max frame rates on these games that I was running. Again, max settings at 1280 times 1024. Bioshock was very smooth at around 60 frames per second average to a max of 79 frames per second. Frontline's Fuel of War, again, very similar, 67 frames per second max. Call of Duty 4 is an older game. I was killing that game on everything maxed out. It was incredible, super smooth. Mass Effect, which is a newer game, that one I was getting a lower frame rate, but then again, it was decent. And Crisis Warhead, also lower frame rate, very demanding. I was getting about 40 frames per second around there, average to a maximum of 60, depending on the levels, of course, that you're running it on. So, but other than that, 
it was a very nice experience to to overclock this and it proves that I can really take this further if I wanted without any water cooling. So definitely for the price, I recommend the CPU because you can do a lot with it. Okay, and you don't have to go out and get another motherboard, for example, and you can use the new DDR RAM when, when it comes down in price. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video and you look into it, and thank you for watching.